Hello everyone, welcome to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be presenting you a static cardiology rhythm and scenario. And on the bottom of the screen, you'll see a one minute and 30 second timer. This timer is here because it closely mimics the actual average time you should be spending on each card during a national registry scenario. At the end of the card, I'll give you an explanation and a treatment for the rhythm that you saw. Good luck. Three, two, one. So this card's a little bit trickier because it's a 12 lead, but just like all static cardiology cards, let's go ahead and examine the rhythm first to make an identification. Now what you're looking at here is actually a hospital or an institutional 12 lead because you're given a single view across all 10 seconds of the 12 lead across the bottom. This just makes it easier to identify the rhythm. Let's take a close look. Now remember what we're looking at here is 10 seconds. Unlike your six second strips, a little bit more challenging to calculate a rate based on just counting unless you know a trick. The trick is to realize that each one of these lead groupings represents two and a half seconds of time. So what we'll do to quickly create a six second strip is we'll take two of these lead groupings and then we will count five additional large blocks which each one of these large blocks represents 0.2 seconds and we'll make our six second strip that way. We'll then count our QRS complexes and determine a rate. So I'm going to go ahead and count this as nine and a half. So we'll say it's 95 BPM. Let's go ahead and identify the rhythm. So we'll examine one of these little complexes with a P wave, nice narrow QRS, and it appears that the R to R interval is consistent, nice and regular. Because this heart rate is 95 BPM, I would diagnose this as a normal sinus rhythm. But remember, because this is a 12 lead, we're gonna to have to identify potentially something more malignant than just the rhythm itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at the leads. Even if you've never really looked or scrutinized 12 leads before, just looking at this one, it's really ugly and you know something is wrong. The way I prefer to really kind of get into the, uh, the nitty gritty of 12 lead interpretation is I like to start with analyzing the anteroceptral leads, leads V1 through V4. And that's because these are correlated to the left anterior descending coronary artery, the LAD, and an occlusion here is sometimes known as a widowmaker. A way I teach this is it's just like an internet listicle these are the top four reasons you're going to die, and they all involve the LAD. So let's go ahead and take a look at those first. Now I'm still seeing V5 and V6 here, which are the lateral leads, so we'll go ahead and get rid of those for a second and just take care of our anteroceptal leads first. So what I'm looking at is I'm trying to determine if there's any ST segment elevation. What this means is here at the J point, 
where the QRS complex connects back to the isoelectric line. And the isoelectric line is simply the baseline, and this is where neither repolarization nor depolarization are occurring. If I'm seeing any sort of elevation above this line, one millimeter in your limb leads, two millimeters in your precordial leads, this is considered significant, and we can diagnose a STEMI if we have at least two of these contiguous leads as in leads that show up in a lead grouping showing ST segment elevation. One millimeter is equivalent to one small box, and each one of these larger boxes is made up of five of those small boxes. So in V1, I'm not seeing any sort of ST segment elevation. In V2, I am. In V3, it's more significant. The ST segment starts up here. And in V4, we're actually starting to see what is described as a tombstone pattern because these are now shaped like the old-timey Western-style tombstones. So I would diagnose this patient as having an antero or anterior ST segment elevation. But before we finalize that, that diagnosis, we have to look at the other leads. The next lead grouping I look at are the inferior ones. I like to look at the inferiors next because they're clumped together in a very, very easy to, to, to look at, easy to interpret group. The inferior leads are leads 2, 3, and AVF. Now I'm only seeing ST segment elevation in one of these leads, and that is in lead 2. And because it's only in one of the leads that make up this grouping, I cannot diagnose this as ST segment elevation in the inferior leads. You'll notice though, that in leads 3 and AVF, there's ST segment depression. Specifically, the ST segment depression in lead 3 is a reciprocal change to AVL which means it's an exact opposite shape of the ST segment and the T wave that are present in AVL. And we'll look at AVL next. Our lateral leads, which comprise one AVL, V5, and V6, all show ST segment elevation. So for the purposes of this card and for static cardiology, I would diagnose this patient, the rhythm as normal sinus rhythm with an anterolateral MI. Let's examine the scenario next. So your patient is 60 years old and is complaining of upper back pain and nausea. So not your typical chest pain call. The pain began after he was shoveling snow. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. The first heavy snow of the year, if you get it in your area, you will see at least one person have a significant MI or even simply drop dead from a heart attack because shoveling snow is a very, very exertional activity and some people may not be up for it. And usually it's someone about this age who's not in the greatest shape and that's just the way it is. It's, it's almost like a tradition. The first snowfall of the year, the first heavy one, you're gonna see somebody drop dead from an MI from shoveling snow. It's just the way it is. You can almost set your watch to it. Patient's skin is pale, cool, and diaphoretic, and he denies trauma. The patient reports he's diabetic. Diabetics usually present atypically when they're having a heart attack. So his complaints were upper back pain and nausea. This is what's considered an atypical presentation, and this may be due to the fact that the patient is diabetic. He's also taking medication for high blood pressure and high cholesterol. Both of these are risk factors in the development of significant coronary artery disease. Vital signs are as follows. Blood pressure is 180 over 98. Pulse is 96. Respirations are 16. SpO2 is 96% on room air. And his blood sugar is 160. So let's move on to the treatment. So to begin, you're gonna need to go ahead and regurgitate the mantra scene safe BSI IBO2 monitor. You're then going to administer aspirin 324 milligrams by mouth nitroglycerin 0.4 milligrams sublingually, either as a tablet or a spray, every five minutes up to a maximum of three doses. You can consider then giving morphine two to four milligrams or fentanyl 50 micrograms IV push. Go ahead and hang some fluids, but keep them at a TKO or a KVO to keep open or keep vein open rates respectively, and then transport the patient to the nearest PCI capable facility, AKA a hospital with a cath lab. For extra brownie points, you could even mention that you're going to place pads on the patient's chest because your anteroseptal or your anterolateral MIs, ones that involve the left ventricle, 
tend to produce lethal ventricular dysrhythmias as they progress. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. Also, please make your own playlists with other static cardiology videos that I've made for you here. You can shuffle them up and create little decks of your own. Till I see you next, have a good rest of your night.